Why is your loan balance growing even though you're making payments? You're doing everything you're supposed to do, and yet it feels like you're swimming against the current. Your loan accumulates interest every day. Yes, every single day. Is there any point in paying more than the minimum? It depends. Am I willing to grind for several years for future financial freedom? Time out. You go to college to live the American dream, and now you have to choose between travel and marriage and kids in order to pay your student loans? I digress. Look at your student loans as part of your overall financial picture. There is a way out. We just gotta find it. Keep moving forward. Welcome back to our student loan Q&A series. Today we have a voicemail from someone who's battling a situation I think many of you might relate to. Let's play the message. I graduated with $42,000 in student loans, but now I owe $45,000 despite making regular payments. I'm also juggling a car loan and rent. Why is my loan balance growing instead of shrinking? Is there any point in paying more than the minimum or should I just make it a problem for later? Yo, I think a lot of us can feel the frustration in that message. It's a situation that's all too common for many student loan borrowers. You're doing everything you're supposed to do, making your payments on time, trying to be responsible with your finances, and yet it feels like you're swimming against the current. That growing balance can be incredibly discouraging, and it's natural to wonder if your efforts are even making a difference. Today, we're gonna break down why this happens and what you can do about it. Whether you're in a similar situation or you're trying to avoid it altogether, understanding how student loans works is crucial for anyone dealing with education debt. So let's dive in and shed some light on this confusing and often overwhelming topic. Let's start by tackling the big question first. Why is your loan balance growing even though you're making payments? Now, this phenomenon is often referred to as negative amortization, and it's a common issue with student loans. To understand this, we need to break down how student loan interest works. Your loan accumulates interest every day. Yes, every single day. When you make a payment, it first goes towards covering the interest that has accrued since your last payment. Only after that accrued interest is paid does any remaining amount go towards reducing your principal balance. And here's the kicker. If your payment isn't large enough to cover all the interest that has accrued, and it probably isn't if you're in an income-driven repayment plan like save, pay-as-you-earn, or IBR, that unpaid interest gets added to your principal balance. This is called capitalization. Well, not really capitalization, but it can lead to capitalization if you end up taking a forbearance and things like that. But when capitalization happens, you're now paying interest on your interest, which is why you can see your balance grow even though you're making payments. Let's use some numbers to illustrate this. Say you have a $42,000 loan at 6% interest. That's about $210 in interest accruing each month. If your monthly payment is only $200, you're not even covering the new interest, let alone touching the principal. Over time, this leads to your balance increasing instead of decreasing. Now that we understand why your balance might be growing, let's address your next question. Is there any point in paying more than the minimum? The answer is, it depends. Your payment strategy should align with your overall financial goals and situation. Let's break this down. If your goal is to pay off your debt as quickly as possible, then yes, paying more than the minimum makes a lot of sense. In this case, you might wanna consider switching from an IDR plan, if you're in one, to a standard repayment plan. And if you work in public service and are pursuing loan forgiveness, paying extra might not be the best strategy. You're, in fact, your strategy is just the opposite. You wanna pay as little as possible and maximize forgiveness. But in order to decide what's best for you, you need to carefully calculate whether you're likely to have a balance forgiven before paying off the loans based on your income, family size, and years of service. Finally, a general rule of thumb I use is this. If you owe more than 1.25 times your annual income in student loans, you're more likely to benefit from pursuing loan forgiveness rather than an aggressive payment strategy. In my experience, it's often challenging to pay down such a high debt while balancing other life expenses. Let me give you an example to make this clearer. Imagine you make $50,000 a year and you have $70,000 in student loan debt. That's a debt to income ratio of 1.4 to 1, which is above our 1.25 threshold. In this case, you might want to consider an income driven repayment plan and pursue forgiveness either through PSLF if you're in public service or through the 20 or 25 year forgiveness offered by IDR plans. On the other hand, if you make 50,000 but only owe 40,000 in student loans, that's a ratio of 0.8 to one. In this scenario, you might be better off focusing on aggressive repayment to clear the debt faster and pay less interest overall. 
Now, I wanna emphasize that this is my shorthand after helping thousands of borrowers tackle these decisions over the past decade. It is not a hard and fast rule, but it's a good starting point when you're trying to figure out your repayment strategy. Every situation is unique and there are always other factors to consider, but I found this ratio to be a helpful quick gauge when borrowers are trying to decide between aggressive repayment and long-term forgiveness strategies. Now, before I move on, I wanna add that what I'm giving you, this isn't a one size fits all solution. Your specific situation is going to matter a lot. Consider factors like, do you have family offsetting some of your living costs? What's the cost of living in your area? How stable is your income? Do you value experiences like travel or kids or marriages? Time out. It is wild that this is a choice you even have to make. Who are we talking about? Like you go to college to live the American dream and now you have to choose between travel and marriage and kids in order to pay your student loans? <laughs> I digress. But the thing is, you're asking yourself, do I prioritize those things or do I prioritize being debt free sooner? And that is a choice you have to make. You have to ask yourself, am I willing to grind for several years for future financial freedom? In order to do that, the key thing to do is look at your student loans as part of your overall financial picture. For some, aggressive repayment is the right choice. For others, minimizing payments to prioritize other financial and life goals makes much more sense. In order to do this analysis, I really recommend that you sit down and map out your financial situation and goals. Consider consulting with a financial advisor or a student loan lawyer who specializes in these types of situations to create a strategy that fits your situation. Now, before we wrap up, let me say this. Number one, you are not alone. I meet people from all walks of life battling the same problem as you. And I promise you this, many of them think their situation is the worst. I promise you it isn't. No matter if you owe $20,000 or close to a million dollars in student loans. And yes, some people owe that much and they're not all lawyers and doctors. There is a way out. We just gotta find it. Student loans are just one part of your financial picture. And thankfully, they're often one of the most flexible debts you have, at least for federal student loans. You can change repayment terms, pause payments, and get loan forgiveness. Those are all unique levers you can pull while you work to build an emergency fund, save for retirement, or invest in your career development. The key thing to do is to stay informed and proactive. Your strategy might change as your life circumstances change, and that's okay. What is important is that you keep moving forward. As Nipsey Hussle said, the marathon continues. The battle is long, the road takes time to travel, and yeah, you might have to change strategies along the way. But with the right approach, you can manage your loans effectively while still living your life and pursuing your goals. If you found this video helpful, share it with someone you know dealing with student loan debt. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.